I'm here with Viking football coach Bruce Barnum, and uh, today we're going to discuss someone who is very near and dear to the Portland State family, uh, a fellow that we lost just the other day, Vern Schultz, passed away uh, last Sunday. Uh, he was a big part of this program uh, to everyone who was involved for decades, and coach, that had to be a little tough to take. Uh, it happened just as camp was about to start, and I know a lot of people are going to miss Vern. Uh, the whole team, Mike, I know we'll miss them. Um, us as a staff, I mean, he was rolling through the, the new pavilion every day. He was through our hallways. and uh, But honestly, going back, I've heard from a lot. Uh, there's a lot of history uh, here besides you and I of student athletes that have gone through here and alumni. I've heard from them. I mean, Vern touched a lot of lives. Well, he certainly did. And uh, uh, Vern Schultz, just as a little background, uh, began his affiliation with Portland State back around 1980. Uh, he got involved working in the equipment room, helping out there, and uh, became just a big, big fan of all of Portland State's athletic teams. He was at practices. He was at games. And uh, he came, became a little bit of a mascot. Everybody knew him. Everybody loved him. The student athletes, year in and year out, uh, kind of all took Vern under their wings, and uh, he was a really, really popular guy. And he was a funny guy. He was a very intelligent guy. And, uh, Coach, maybe uh, you have a few things you could relate. I know Vern was very close to all the programs, but in particular, probably football, wrestling, and uh, softball. But uh, he was around your program a lot. He was. Uh, and there are a lot of stories, Mike, and about 90% of them can be told. <laughs> but... Um, I, I remember the first time I met Vern. Um, I came with a prior staff with Nigel Burton's staff, and um, I said, who's this guy? He had, he had more access um, to everything around here uh, than, all, than any of us as coaches, that was, which was kind of cool. Everybody accepted him. Um, he was at our meals. Um, again, uh, I, I, we show up to work. We talked about it in our staff meeting this morning, just how, how many lives that he touched at Portland State. And I know uh, at one time you gave him a whistle or a horn to uh, help you with team uh, periods, and uh, he got so aggressive with those. I think you had to take him away, didn't you? I did. I hired him. Uh, my first year we hired Vern. He's one of my first hires. Uh, he was, had the horn for us, and he, he, it was a job he took with zest. <laughs> and we have five-minute periods to break up practice, but I had to get on him. He, he was enjoying everything about it because uh, that horn is loud. Um, and he was jumping out of his chair, uh, but our periods turned in about every two, uh, and the horn got a little mixed up. So um, it rained one day, and I had to talk to Vern. He didn't come back. <laughs> well, Vern, uh, without a doubt, was one of the happiest people I ever knew. And uh, I have one story that I'll relate. And this goes back to the 1990s uh, when here in the Stotts Center, the gym was kind of in its old configuration. Vern would come to every sporting event, and this was back in the days when he uh, still was able to walk unaided but very slowly and, and had some difficulty. Uh, before a volleyball match, he went out to the concession stand. He, he purchased a Pepsi. And it was very challenging for him to balance that Pepsi, bring it all the way back into the gym, came all the way around to the other side of the gym and set it down. Then he walked back out uh, to the concession stand once again. He got his popcorn. He was ready for the match. It took him a long time. He walked all the way back in, all the way around uh, the court, set his popcorn down. And he was actually right next to press row where I was. He got both of those items, sat down right next to him. He turned around very slowly and deliberately, as Vern did. He very gently sat down. Meanwhile, all the volleyball players are warming up. And just as he sat down and turned and faced the volleyball players, a volleyball came rocketing in, and it hit the Pepsi and the popcorn simultaneously and literally exploded into the air all over Vern, all over the floor, all over everything. Vern's Pepsi and popcorn were done. And I thought, oh my goodness, how's this going to go? Vern turned and looked at me, and he smiled, and he threw his head back, and he just laughed. And I thought, if everybody can have that kind of spirit after the 10 minutes that he went through to get himself set up, that was pretty impressive. And you just hit on it, Mike. Um, just on the short time I've been here, the memories of Vern uh, from the – the camps, my first era with the camp summer and Peanut, that first group, uh, Gonzalez, those kids were always around him, and the laughter uh, is what I remember. It, it was always there. 
no matter what happened in practice or what was going on in those kids' lives, when they left Vern, everybody seemed to be laughing. And Vern was famous for telling the football players shoes off because the cleats were not supposed to be uh, on here in the uh, building. And uh, trainer Randy Logan, ironically enough, told me yesterday he had some guys come into the training room with shoes on because Vern wasn't there for him. Vern Schultz will be greatly missed by hundreds and thousands who've gone through here the last many decades at Portland State. Really a truly inspiring figure here, and uh, he is a legend. We're going to miss you, Vern.